it's Saturday morning and you're in the right place at the right time for the Multicolored Talk Show with Stevie Gerald and Eddie Hastings. Morning. morning, everybody. Morning, morning. 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 It's Saturday morning. It's Saturday morning. It's 11 o'clock, and you're Saturday. live on the Multi Color Talk Show. Look, look what we've done. We've changed our location. We went down the road. I said that we lost the antis. That woman had it moved for two weeks. It's been well we've got her in it. Oh, well, on the beach. Welcome home. <laughs> Welcome. Well, well, he was, wasn't blind. He, he was. I just remember that. He wasn't, Eddie. Piers and Lee. Well, Oh, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you this week? Ah, I'm not Peter Zilli. No. Uh, this week, everybody, this week, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Norman Bennett. <laughs> Norman Bennett, <laughs> MBE. <laughs> da, 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 da. Norman Bennett, <laughs> MBE. Probably the number one ringmaster the UK has ever produced. Yes. Because I was on verge of actually joining the circus. Yeah, yeah, I can believe that. I didn't want to. My parents told me to I go. Bet they see my you. parents, yeah. that, my parents at the age of about six, told me for God's sake, just go and join the oh, circus. Brilliant, brilliant. So uh, yeah, Norman Bennett. Hats off to Norman. Norman Bennett. What's my hair today? What did Norman wear sunglasses? No, he didn't. No, because the lights in here. That's why I came down with Peters and Lee because the, Peters and Lee. He wasn't blind. It was because of the, the the lights and and uh, what was that program called? I don't know. No, uh, Opportunity Knocks. Was it Opportunity Knocks with Huey Green? Oh, no, you're kidding me. <laughs> you are kidding me, on, aren't you? <laughs> We've got, we've got, we've got some builders. All... Shut up! Two doors down. I t- I know, you know, I know it is, don't you? It's Paul Green. Who you think it is? I know it is. He's doing, he's doing Shona's house up. Oh right. Right. He stopped. So I'm at eleven o'clock. We're going like I stopped. Right. Ah, oh, there you go. Brilliant. Unbelievable. You know what I mean? I'm trying to become an international star, and I've got lunatics two doors down. <laughs> uh, well, good morning, everybody. It's Saturday. It's been a week and a half, though, hasn't it? From <sighs> From the subjects we're talking about today, we're going to be talking about immigration into the Canary Islands and the UK as well. Is it's, it's a European problem, or is it a problem? It's a worldwide problem, isn't it? We're going to talk well, about that, but we're going to have a laugh as well. And so. uh, the lockdown, the lockdown in the UK, things are changing as we speak. Uh, what's happening over there, and also the great news this week with the beard. Yeah. Now, I don't, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't go down that road again this week because I got myself into trouble. Everybody, I'm walking down. I was in Mecadonna and Everybody. somebody. Sh- I was in Mecadonna buying cheese and this woman came over to me. She said, "I don't know thrush." <laughs> uh, <laughs> really, really, that wasn't me. People have tried, but everywhere, everywhere, people are asking me, "Have you given anybody thrush?" And I'm like, "No, that was you last night." No, I apologise. I apologise yeah. to everybody. If what I've offended you, anybody, I apologise. So good morning guys, welcome, it is uh, Saturday morning, you are watching the Multicoloured Talk Show with me, Eddie from 60's Bar. And Steve Jarrett of Ram the Chicken Shack. Absolutely. We're live. People say, do you record this show? No, we're not. No, this no. is absolutely live. As it happens. As yeah. it happens. Another thing is... Norman it, Bennett. It's, yeah, no, not really Steve. <laughs> it's, no, it's Norman. Norman Bennett. Norman Bennett. You know, a great story with Norman Bennett. You know, one of the fantastic stories. He says once, he says once, line tamers get paid more. Why? But ringmasters live longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. actually, I actually met Norman Bennett once because I no. used to. Yeah, I used to do. Oh, you're well, older than I am, aren't you? Well, I'm much older. But uh, I used to do family parties for. Uh, what sort of family parties? Well, no, not no, like no, family. No, 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 not Tupperware. Which <laughs> no, we used to know the Ann Summers ones. No. No. I don't know who she well, was. Well, I did. I used to be the DJ for uh, a family What's a DJ? of fairground people. A disc jockey sort of person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. And, uh, fairground people? Yes, they had fairgrounds all over the place. Travellers? Um, one of them was Travelers. the Chipperfield family. And Norman was there. So I've, I've met... You've met Norman? I've met Norman. Norman, Norman. Norman. This lot of, a lot of people don't know this, but Norman many years ago, he was about 16, 17, he worked for a local paper. And uh, this lady called him up. She says, good morning. My husband's passed away. His name is Norman Goldberg. Has passed away, and she said, "I'd like to put an ad in the local paper." He says, "Yeah, no problem. What would you like to? You know, what would you like to say? Just say Norman Goldberg's passed away." 
and uh, Norman Bennett says, well, Mrs, I can't, I can't just have one line. The minimum's two line on the local paper. She says, well, put in, put in, Norman Goldberg passed away, Volvo for sale. <laughs> Right, listen guys, it's great that you're on. We've got quite a few people online now, but this week we can see your comments, which is great. Would you like to have a look, Steve? Well, I mean, have, a look, have a look at all these. There's great ones. Oh, let me put yeah, my glasses on. Oh, you've got to put glasses on. Getting old. Oh, yeah. yeah. Michael Caine. Somebody, somebody <laughs> says on the chat last week, somebody said on the chat, he said, what a fabulous show. It's Ricky Fulton and... I can't Jasper Carrot. Yeah, Jasper Carrot. Jasper Carrot. He was ginger. Was he? Yeah. Nothing wrong with gingers, don't get me. No, I mean, well, I've, got, I've got a lot of friends who are gingers. There's Brian McLaughlin. Yeah, we've He's got a ginger. Stevie Warnock says, how's it going, Stevie Warnock? Right, that's Stevie Warnock. He's from Scotland, old Barney Scotland. Good morning to Thomas. His what? wife, his wife is a marathon runner. What? And really? what they do, you, have you noticed now, they're actually doing virtual marathons. Well, that's like they do that the virtual cycling as well, don't they? That's they call cheating, it, isn't it? Well, they call it peloton with cycling, don't that's they? That's cheating. it would be virtual sex next. Paul King says it just seems like yesterday when I was talking to you two. Well, it was. Paul you only King. went home yesterday. Paul King. Paul, King. Paul and I were in there. Oh, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Lovely oh, couple. Short memory. Uh, Paul King wants to know Gordon Bennett is. Well, we've just told you on that. And Stevie Warnock is working on tunics. He's going to send you some tea cakes. Oh, you like a bit of tonic, then, not you? I love Tonic's cannibal logs. Oh, they're great. Oh, a bit of coconut. A, a little bit of tea. Don't eat it in bed. You know that with coconut up your ass? There's nothing worse than a coconut up your ass. <laughs> that's, that's on, up your ass. Hang on a second. You can't sit there and say Tonic's coconut and caramel logs and bed in the same sentence because that doesn't sound right. Why? It's nothing nicer in the morning having a nice cup of tea and a Tarox can of a log in bed. We're going to say good morning to Mary Tavener. Good morning, how are you, Mary and Rob? I'm going to say, they, uh, no, they have for breakfast. No, they have for breakfast. No, not me. Sound not engineer me. Jack, he's on a family packet of crisps. Holly, our PR manager, is, she's eating bars of chocolate. This is for breakfast. All right. I came here for my Wesby Weetabix. No, we don't have Weetabix. We don't have Weetabix. Uh, shit. Right. So good morning to Mary and to Bob Tavern. It's good to see you. Uh, Jane, I would never say this word properly. Uh, I'm just going to say, Jane, it's De Delil. De I can't say Del it. Del I can never pronounce that. So uh, good morning to you, Jane. Good morning, Raymond McKenna. Well, that's a criminal. Uh, that's and, uh, a criminal. That's a criminal. Who's a criminal? <laughs> you, called, you called them a criminal last week. Did I? Yeah. I, Me? Well, yeah, I, I, I criminal. Then? Allegedly, I got a lawyer's letter. Raymond isn't a criminal. I never said that. Bit of an alky, but oh, definitely dear. not a criminal. Right, right. right. Morning, Brenda. Morning, Rob. It's good to have so many people online yeah. watching us. Right. Immigration. No, no, no. no. Everybody gather round on the playground. Come on, get yourself in. He came up with his subject this week. I think it's a good subject. It's, it's a dodgy very... subject. You got it. You're walking on thin ice. It is dodgy. But anybody, especially the UK, so we, we can we can speak over here a little bit more because we're in uh, Tenerife, Canary Islands, yeah. and we don't really get called a racist. The racist card in the UK. You mentioned immigration in the UK, Nigel Farage, and they're there. Whoa, Very racist. I mean, Nigel Farage, he, he actually brought it up to light for the, for the for the media in the UK when he was out in his boat in the English Channel following these boats coming from, from France over to the UK. Yeah. Well, the BBC never covered the story, and thanks to Nigel Farage, he actually made people aware <laughs> of what was going on. Uh, in the Canary Islands, you won't believe these figures were coming out this week. We've actually had 2,900, I'm just, 2,900 immigrants arriving in one week. In one week, Eddie, you listening to me. Yes, I'm doing something. You know how many we had in 2019 for the whole year? Go on then. 2,600. Yeah. For the whole year. 2,600, 2019. Mm. This week, we've had 2,900. Something's happening over there, Eddie. Something is seems that even yesterday we're talking a boat arrived in Los Cristianos with 195 immigrants. We call them immigrants. I don't know what's the word. Is it asylum immigrant? seekers. Then you can't come from Senegal in in, in in Morocco be an asylum seeker. I don't know. You see, I, I don't want to be 
controversial because that's not what this is about. No, 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 no. But you see, the thing is, they're spending an awful lot of money on these people who are coming in, uh, not just to the Canaries, to the UK as well, spending an awful lot of money on these people. Hotels? Well, yeah, but the thing is, there are people in our countries that need that money spending on them. It's, you know? Yeah. And it's a hotbed. It is a hotbed. Listen, if you've got any thoughts, drop them in the comments. Yeah, I want to know, and what's the I'm answer? Gonna... What's the answer? Because if you look at a bigger picture, right, we're all immigrants. I came from Glasgow to here, so I was an immigrant. I came here, I stole a job off somebody, you know, stole a few other things off people. <laughs> uh, but... You know, in the UK with the Irish, the Irish went to America, the you know, race. the Scottish, they, they, there's a, what's the name of the town in the north of England? It's full of Scottish people and they have burn suppers and they have St. And the Andrews now, they have... A, That'll be Scotland. No, it's not, it's in England. It's, what's the name of the town? If Corby. Corby, yes. Corby, they call like, it Cor Little Scotland. Yeah, you know, yeah. That, that's immigration, isn't it? Scottish people with the steelworks, I think it was, they all came down yeah, to no, England. No, no, that wasn't immigration, that was relocation. So these, so these people come from Africa, is that re relocation? No, it's not really. I, I mean, it's, it, like you say, it's a complete and absolute hotbed. Now, we could get really political here, but we shouldn't. Really. No, it's... Whatever we say, it's not going to make a difference. No. It really isn't. It's the answer. What's the answer? There is no you know, answer. I tell, you what, I tell you what the Canadian government, the, what, tell you what they've done this week. With the help of Madrid, with central government, they've actually got two warships out there. Did you know that? Uh -huh. Yeah, but the, the, the warships there, and yesterday a boat came in with 195 people. But they might as well have a rowing boat because they're not going to turn the guns on the warship on no, human beings. No, what's, ha they? what's happened is, uh, it's happened in the UK as well. They're called motherships. Yeah. They bring, they bring them over on the mothership with the little boat tied to it. to get in close enough to put them on. 195 people. They never left Africa, Eddie. They never left Africa to get over here. What? 195 people. They were on a mothership. Went on to the little boat and pushed towards Los Cristianos let's just and Gran Canaria. Let's just say hello to a few people. Morning, Roger. Roger Lancaster. Uh, he's, he's from Wales. Oh, he's lovely. Brenda Lancaster. They're fabulous people. They're living in Wales. Complete lockdown in Wales. We'll come to that in yeah. the second part of the show. He says, I hope the COVID police don't come knocking because he's watching a non-essential show. This, this is an essential show. No, he's watching. He's calling us non-essential. We are essential. For him, we're essential. You're a ringmaster. Haven't you got a whip you can eat in, Mum? Oh, God, I'm oh, so left at a party. So, good morning, Chris. Chris and Kerry over there in the UK watching us. That's Ginger Elvis. You love them, they're great. And uh, Toby Graham, Toby Matthews. Oh, singer. We mentioned him last week. No, I'll tell you who we didn't mention last week when we were going through the entertainers. What's that? Ah, oh, mate, I have suffered all week because of this. Who did you not mention? Holly, great Holly. singer, great singer, fabulous. I only forgot the wife. Not only a singer, she's a baker, and I would love to see our Holly on the Bake Off. Karen Forbes is there, good morning. Wendy Johns, oh, she's replying to people online, that's, that's fantastic. Why He's got a little chat, it's yes. himself. I think There's an interesting opinion. question. What's the point uh, being Wendy, uh, we were just talking Glasses about immigration. On. Yeah. Wendy just says, why are most of these people young males now, yeah. that's, that's an interesting well, point well we're well, saying that Eddie it's been, it's been going on for centuries the Canary Islands they, they, they emigrated twice in the history you know that the last time was John Franco mm. uh, they went on boats and because of the trade winds the Christopher Columbus famous trade winds took them down to places like Venezuela and Cuba so that's why when you go to Venezuela and Cuba I'll tell you a lovely story about Cuba there's actually a centre and it's called Centro de Canarias and it's in Havana and it's just down from Hemingway Bar. And uh, when I was working for the government, you listen to me. You never listen to me. I am when, I, when, I, when I was working for the government, I went over to Cuba in an official capacity to present uh, to the Canary House uh, a little plaque from Santiago de Tairi to, to thank them. This lovely little house, is that, it's not a house, it's, yeah, it is a house. And that's where the history comes from, the immigration from the Canary Islands going to Cuba and also to Venezuela. Because Venezuela... Canaries in Venezuela still vote in our elections here. Did you know that? I had no idea. Yeah, they still have the right because of the blood. What's going across my screen here? Because uh, of the bloodline. Yeah. So they were. So we had the Canaries immigration now, and they were all young males. They were the males who went there to find a better life and then bring the family over. 
to Venezuela, to Cuba, and other South American countries. So this is exactly the same what's happening. Hundred years later, Eddie, so so yes, no the Africans are coming over here looking for a better life. So basically, there's no difference. Is what you're telling me? No, well, what I'm telling you, Eddie, is in the 1900s there was plenty of room at the table. Yeah. You know what I mean? There and was plenty nothing. of room at the table. Now in 2020, <clears throat> there isn't plenty of room at the table. Schools are overcrowded. The hospitals are overcrowded. Uh, you know, there's not enough room. That's the problem. And the bottom line, there isn't enough room. Yeah. Well, that's what I think, Eddie. But the thing is, what you've got to say is that they are still coming here. They're still in, coming. In the droves. You know why? And there doesn't seem any way to stop yeah, them. Well, they tried to stop them. This way, the, 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 the Spanish MI6, what you want to call them, they arrested 30 Moroccans. That's and I can it. say that. 30 Moroccans, they got, they got arrested over in Africa for so setting up an illegal immigration, which you call them, the criminals, yeah. criminal element of it. Yeah. And they were charging 3,000 euros. That's fact. You hear the figures between one and five. These, that This company, criminal, they were charging 3,000 euros for these young black men and they were paying it. It's yeah. a lot of money. 3,000 euros is a lot of money. A lot of people out there don't have 3,000 euros. No. I know quite a few don't have it. Yeah. You know, so they, they, they've saved up, they've robbed for it, you know, whatever they've done for it, got a loan to come out early for a better life. So they've been arrested, which is a good thing. Maybe close that one down. As soon as you close one, another one opens. Say no more. Say no more. We're going to say hello to uh, a few more people who are talking to us online, which is great. Good morning, uh, Stephen Simpson. Good to see you. And uh, we've got Michelle Shelley from Del Mar's online. Oh, we mentioned her last week. We did. Because I had to apologise to Shirley because she was a Scouser and I have nothing against Scousers. Oh, nothing. you put your foot in I know it, it did. Yeah. I know it. And, and Kay Willis is alive. Second Hand Frank's alive. You're all alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. We're a miracle on this show. I you think... know somebody's dead. Mention them on my show and we'll bring them back to life. Do you know what I think? I think that's why you come as a different person every week. Because if you upset somebody the week yeah, before... Yeah, was it me? Were you? <laughs> yeah. It was cold. Carlos Carlos he did it last week. He's and now going, Norman Bennett. It's not Norman. It's not Norman. Norman Bennett. Do you know why he was Norman Bennett? Was famous, one of the best ringmasters ever in the UK. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember him? You did well, you met him. Do you, do you remember his show? Yeah. He was twenty-five years in Blackpool. Do you know that he worked twenty-five yeah. years in Blackpool? And in two thousand and ten, on his last show, do you know what happened? What? Go on. Guess uh, what happened? He got eaten by a lion. No, he did not. It was surprise, surprise. Oh, Norman yeah. Bennett, this, this is, is your is life. life. Yeah, yeah they were surprised, and he was on yeah. This Is Your Life, which is absolutely fabulous. Brenda, That'll happen to me one day. Brenda, Don't turn up at this chicken shack, though. I'll be busy. <laughs> Brenda Lancaster says, trying to escape such bad places, you would have thought these young men would want to save their women and children. Hey. There yeah, well, yeah, Brenda, as I said before, they send the men first like the Canadians did, like the Scottish people did. History tells you that the young, uh, physical, fit guy will go first and then bring the rest. And you've seen it happen in the UK. As soon as one gets in, gets the paperwork, they're all in. Right, and that, that's just fact. Listen, we've got to say good morning to Gavin Mel and uh, Jimmy Flynn. They were on last Come week. Good morning, Jimmy. Regulars. Hey, Can we say that? This is only a third show, and we've got regulars. Regulars. I can't believe it. It's, it's like the like 60s, but you get loads of regulars in there, don't you? We do same as chicken, show. Yeah, yeah, people, yeah, come, yeah. people yeah. tend to come once and sort them, then they never come back again. I'm sorry I keep disappearing, but the comments are over there. He's There's here. a lady. I've always said, talking about insulted people, there was, there was always, I talked about it this week, there was only one, really, one person's never really come back after I insulted her. And I know, I know I shouldn't have said it, but I did. There was a lady that turns up. As you know, Eddie, people turn up and they look like people. Course, David Eddie. Ikes. Yeah. We've got the, the Michael Caine lookalikes. I love David Ike. Yeah, he's lovely. Oh. He's a lovely, lovely guy. These are all just lookalikes. People look like somebody, you know. And this woman came in one night at the chicken shack and I said it. It came out and it was too late. I couldn't get it back in my mouth. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, we've got Susan Boyle in tonight. <laughs> you know what? She's you're, never been back. You have to be so careful what you say. She's never been. She looked like Susan Boyle. I'm oh, telling you, yeah, she was rocking on the chair. Half of the things, half of the things you said. A dream, a dream. I'll Come on. Good morning, James and Shirley Gerard. Good morning to uh, Martin Lloyd. Not a relation to me. I'm Stephen Gerard, and that no, not, yeah, not Martin a relation. Martin says, "Bring Foghorn Leghorn back." Bring who? Foghorn Leghorn. Who's that? Cartoon character, big chicken. Don't know them. You don't know him? No. I'll have to show you later. Oh, I heard that before. Yeah. I heard that before. Come and see me puppies. Yes. Yeah. Right, Anderson, guys, I think we've uh, embarrassed ourselves enough with uh, 
with immigration. Everybody has got a, a It's thought. an ongoing problem. It is, yeah. But look, when we finish this... Build a wall. Build a wall. Build a wall. <laughs> Donald Trump build a wall. We can't build a wall. We can't build a wall. We're Canadian Islands. We're the closest bit to... Uh, uh, to Africa, well, we, we had the worst case. Two thousand in in in, in six. I've got my memories gone today. Two thousand and six. That's when we were hit. We were peaking. We were peaking. Yeah. We had nearly a million. Yeah. Immigrants came over in two thousand six, two thousand eight. Those two year period, thousands, million coming over, and it's heading that way now. When I've just said, you know, the figures we've had in one week more than the whole of two thousand nineteen. So the gates are open. Right, now listen, what we need you to do is, we know you're watching on Facebook, we need you to pop uh, over to our, uh, our YouTube channel. What have you got there? It's an Easter egg. You've got an Easter egg? Yeah, I thought I'd start early. I thought, yeah. no, I was getting early, to be honest with you, because people know that I love uh, selection boxes. Yes. Love selection. I've already had a couple of selection boxes in October, and I'm sure I'm going to get a lot more in November and December. So the people who are coming over November and December, selection boxes, but the people, a lot of people have been booking holidays for next year. You're not having it. Sound engine, that's, that's, that's the PR women. There you are, oh, that's what we like. Right, now put that back in its box. Right, everybody, where are we now? Eddie, Eddie's pressing all the buttons. The sound engineers went out with his packet of crisps. Right, Eddie. There you go, I'm trying to get you some Passed away. comments and over there. You're not having it. Yes, yeah, oh, this there. is live. You can tell it's live. There you go. It's, it's an live. amateur. Can't be bad. Right, so yeah, we need you guys to pop over to our YouTube channel, which is called the Multicolored Talk Show. Hit that subscribe button. You gotta hit subscribe. You gotta hit share it. us. You got share us. Next one. Like us. Like us. And set your notifications. Hit the bell. Uh, we're gonna have a quick chat uh, about lots of different things today. Uh, I'm not with it today. No, you know. No, I don't know what's happened. I think because I, I said to people on my Facebook page, uh, my holiday was cancelled yesterday. Horrendous. Uh, Absolutely morning, lovers. horrendous. Lee. I know you've all had holidays cancelled. Lee Naylor says, morning lovers. How are lovers. you? I'm not his lover. Bring uh, Stevie, bring my brother Tony back, says Brenda Lancaster. Oh, are you that good? Tony, God yeah. bless him, he's up there. He's ah. up there. And also, lovely guy. Elaine husband says she loves diamonds. Elaine husband, she's she's one of them as well. What? O B E M B E. Oh really? Yeah, she got that. You know why she got that? Lovely no. lady. All the work she done for help the heroes. Oh, how fantastic! Yeah, and she got. I can't remember. It was an M B E O B E. I've got an M B E. I've got an O B E. What's that? Ordinary, ordinary bald egg. No, I've got an M B E. What you got an M B E for? Kevin Bet. Okay, oh, good, yes. Yeah, Kenny Bennett. I keep, forget, I keep Kenny Bennett. forgetting. Kenny Bennett. Kenny Bennett. You're, you're Mr. Bennett. Is it Gordon? Gordon, Gordon Bennett? No, Gordon <laughs> Bennett. That's somebody else, isn't it? You don't even know. I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> I, honestly, I know. I, I, people, you've never had a holiday cancel. People understand what I'm talking about. When you get a holiday cancel, it's like somebody's died in your family. It's horrendous. They rip your guts out. You know? That's how I feel today. My holiday was cancelled yesterday. And I went to the post office this morning and the post office was shut, which didn't bloody help. You're going to ask me why I went to the post office. Graham Wilson, good morning. Good morning to you, Graham Wilson. It's good to see you. Uh, we're going to try and make a phone call. I don't call. have all the dressing up anymore. Why? Because it's like... Yeah. I went to Scooby's this morning. For my, Scooby's is open Saturday mornings now. Excellent. I went there for a quick early breakfast and uh, I went like this. <laughs> I walked by the central bar. You know what I heard? No, go on. Johnny Walker! <laughs> I'm not like Johnny Walker. You look like him. Not at nine o'clock in the morning. I'm not no, even Johnny Walker at nine o'clock in the morning, am I? I'll tell you what, you look... Oh, what was that? That bulldog one as well? John Bull? John Bull? Who's John Bull? You have no idea, do you? Who's John Bull? John Bull. If anybody's heard of John Bull, tell me Who's... if he looks like John Bull. Oh, Johnny Walker. Yeah, Johnny Walker as well. There's loads of them. Well, I'm not. Yeah. Who am I? I don't know. A lovely bow toy. Love it. I can't remember. I'm Bennett. Somebody Bennett. Norman. 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 <laughs> yeah. I it was because I know I know a few Bennetts out there. Graham. Graham Bennett used yeah. to live over here. Lovely guy. Yeah. Graham Bennett. Yeah. Kitchen by Design. Yeah. Graham Bennett. Sandra oh. Bennett. Yeah. I'm few, so I get mixed up. I'm yeah. Graham. No, you, I'm not. Who am I? Norman. A, Norman. It's just that name, Norman. Norman. Sounds very gay. I'm nothing against people called Norman. It's just you know, if you're in Glasgow. <laughs> 
you, you don't get Normans in Glasgow. You know, nobody would be called Norman. I don't know any Normans in Glasgow. That's Ruperts. Crazy. You don't get Ruperts in Glasgow. You'd be dead before you're four. Oh, You'd be completely beaten up. <laughs> Even the lollipop lady would hit you. Right, listen, guys. Uh, here we go. Gather round. Gather round. Come on, everybody. Onto the playground. I think you may have done, yeah. Right, listen, guys. This, this chair. Honestly, God, the cushion's up halfway up my ass. <laughs> Get out the beach. <laughs> Jesus, right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. Right. Uh, I want, yeah. Uh, uh, this is jacket. Let me explain to you. During the week, uh, I send a WhatsApp to Stevie, right? And I say, what are the subjects this week? He did, he did, he did, and, he did. Uh, he asked, and, asked me for advice because he's not very good uh, at his own journey. I'm week. still learning. I'm still learning. So uh, I asked him what the subjects were this week, and he came up with immigration into the Ken area. Because it was on the news at the time, wasn't yes, it? That's it why. Was, it was, but I'm like, ooh. But we did it, we've covered it, we've, look, we've looked at it, and we've, we've said a, a little piece. Piece, there, piece. Yeah. you sent me piece. But your next one's a good one. I quite like the next one. Uh, it's, it's, it's the lockdown in the UK. Now this oh, is... Oh, that's been changing every day this week. It's another hotbed, isn't As it? As Brendan knows, Wales is completely locked down. Yeah. Wales, locked down. But Scotland... Scotland, Scotland locked down. My brother's climbing the walls. They're yeah. climbing the walls because the pubs are shut. Well, they're climbing the walls. Is that Hadrian's wall? No, it's down, in it? We should rebuild that, should oh, we? we will, yeah. Or Nicola. But, and Nicola <clears> can <throat> rebuild that. Now, they'll say, though, something. To be honest, I think Scotland... I've done it a little bit better than the UK. The UK... Why, got, Scotland, not the UK? Well, no, well, OK, better than England, then. Come yeah, that's, just admit to it. Admit to it. I don't give a sh... Yeah. Shoot, I nearly swore then. Yeah, I hate that, nearly hate swore. that, hate oh, that. Hush my mouth. But what they've done, right, is... England have got three tiers. It's like, you know, one, two, three. But Scotland have got five tiers. <laughs> Did you know this? No, no, no tell no, me, Eddie. No, no, no. Honestly, guys, you, you're We there. don't see in Scotland, we don't care how many tears. All we care about is the pump shop. Uh, listen. That's <laughs> that's the bottom line, isn't it? Before we get here, hang on. Graham Wilson, good morning, Brendan. Brent Graham Land. Wilson. Why did you go to the post office, she wants to know? Ah, uh, yes, thank you. I did say that. Because the one year not the other were you. I went, because cause a lot of people who know me, when I go on holiday, you know, I always take three suitcases, I fly business class. One suitcase is for me and two suitcases to give away. And I've got to thank people. People giving me secondhand mobile phones and laptops I've taken to Cambodia and things to Vietnam. This year I was going to Brazil. And as we all know, it's a third world country, very poor country. And I had two suitcases full of clothes. And my heart was broken. Yes, it's still broken. I'm not going to Brazil for Christmas and New Year. Because I had so much to give to families. I said, so I know a few people over there now. And um, lovely little Christmas present, Eddie. You know, a little thing goes a long way. Yeah, absolutely. Just ask Holly, she knows. And. <laughs> <laughs> but, so. It's totally uncalled for. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, where was it? Yeah, so I, I wrapped, I've got boxes I, I'm, I'm going to post to the to Brazil. And they'll be there for Christmas. And I went to the post office this morning, <laughs> got all these boxes out. I parked in the parking spaces, you get 15 minute parking space. It's there, it's empty, I went great, it's got my boxes. Philip, <laughs> Philip Jenkins says it looks like more like Ronnie Corbett, I don't know if that's you or me. You? Yeah. yeah. You. Good morning to Anita Knight, Sarah Satchel. Anita, that's past night, Mrs. Yeah. Lovely. She says we're nuts, we've brightened up her morning, brilliant. No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm carrying four boxes here outside the post office. Yeah, but Michelle likes the beach. Lovely beach. Lovely beach. Super beach. You've got to watch the undercurrent. And then she says, poor Holly, you've got me in trouble, you have. We mentioned that. You told me to mention it. No, you were talking about little things. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Right. If you uh, ever want a nice scar, I'll give that to Holly. Holly makes the lovely scars. So, it, can it, it, anyway, I've got the I've got the boxes. Sorry. And the bloody post office is shut. <laughs> it, used, it used to be open on Saturdays. It's shut now because of COVID. Really? Yeah. Monday to Friday, shut Saturdays due to COVID. How does that work? I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's, sure. it, it'll come into our next conversation about lockdown. Will, will it about, work? Yeah, because will COVID, because COVID only comes out at a certain time, doesn't it? While we're back on lockdown, Wendy Jones says they're in North Wales and uh, lockdown. they're locked down. Scotland have more tears because they're always crying about everything, Martin Lewis says. Oh, man. Is that uh, Martin Lewis the money man? 
<laughs> no, Martin Lewitt. Oh, right, because they've um, got him out in Lewis. Oh, that's my, he used to be the manager of Paddy's. Lovely guy. Yeah. He used to have a Santiago Rent-A-Car. There Lovely you go. Guy. And then uh, Brenda Lancaster says that cranky woman in Scotland wants to do 10 tears just to go one better than England. So we're talking about oh, the lockdown like in, in England, and it's kind of going mad. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and phone a friend of ours. Phone a friend, yeah. Go 50-50, Eddie. Go 50-50. We're going to try it. Let's see if we no, can No, because get there's certain things I don't understand. Here we go. We're, we're, we're calling. The phone's ringing. The phone's ringing. Let's see what happens. Oh, you've got the right number. I hope I have to. Right. This is live. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Is that, is that my very good friend, Gavin Griffiths? It could be if you want it to be. That'll do for me. Good morning, Gav. Yeah, yeah. How you doing? Good morning, Gav. Let's give you a round of applause. Great show so far, Steve. Yeah. Hey, so this is Gav. Gav, you, you yeah. seem to be an expert. You're in the UK. Whereabouts are you in the UK? In the Nottingham. And I'm definitely not an expert, though. I've been to Nottingham. The Nottingham race course. Uh, been there for the dogs actually, but not for the horses. Say no more. Say no more. Say, oh, it is a bit of a red light <laughs> district around that area. I know what you mean, Gavin. Know what you mean. Now listen, Gav, you've been yep. watching. You've been watching uh, the old guy rules and everything uh, since we yep. started it. And Before he met me. Yes. Well, this is the point I'm coming to. Yeah. And uh, th this is one person you've always wanted to talk to, isn't it? Yeah, Mr. Stevie Gerard, I know. I was Gerard. legend, I believe. Le no, Gavin, you're a darling, an absolute darling. Are you anywhere near uh, Sunny Nashville? Uh, not far, but not close enough. Right, because I nearly got murdered in Sunny Nashville once. <laughs> Wow, I'm not surprised. It's, it's a rough area. Rougher than rough. There's an. There's an. If I ask you go to learn how to drive, you you do an L. There's an L place. What do you call it? Practice place. And I'm walking down the street in Sutton in Ashfield, next to Mansfield, and this bloody car came onto the pavement, and nearly killed me. It was a. It was a woman driver. Not for all the women drivers, but it was a learner. And didn't even blink an eye. I'm against the wall. Wow. Yeah. Excellent. Well, there anyway, you go. Gavin, are you in lockdown in Nottingham? Well, this is it. It is one of the things that is, I think, people are getting so angry about is that no one knows what is happening from one minute to the next, and we're supposed to be heading for tier three here in Nottingham, but as yet, not we're not in there yet. So, were you, were you then start to panic by? No, nope. I think anybody who does that kind of thing is totally and utterly irresponsible. And after the last fiasco we had when that all happened. People need to think a little bit more and start taking a bit of responsibility and thinking, actually, there's not just me to think about in this world. So I, I don't agree with that kind of stuff at mm. all. Can I stop you there just for a second? Let me, let me explain who Gavin is. Uh, Gavin uh, used to be uh, an England footballer. He used to be an wow. England cricketer. Wow. He now wow. plays tennis. Oh, geez, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well done, no, Gav. The list goes <laughs> on. The man is uh, a supreme drummer. He has his own radio show. Uh, and he can give us a really good perspective from a different angle on lockdown in the UK. What sort of angle are we talking well, about? Well, because Gavin is uh, he's, he's not a sighted person. He's what we call colloquially term as a blind person. So now you know that, you ask Gavin how but, you think uh, it is. Yeah, but Gavin, you're a real blind person, not like Peters and Lee. He wasn't blind. <laughs> no, definitely real. There is, there, is, uh, yeah. there is no sight here at all. Right, well, I didn't know that, Gav. Well done, I didn't know that. How did you play? How did you play football? Um, it, it, the, the, the simple thing is that the ball has some ball bearings inside it, so that it makes a noise when you're kicking it ah, around. Basically, like, like a little cat's the, be, like a little cat's ball with a bell in it. <laughs> you know I mean? No, but there's some good videos out there of that kind of thing if you watch. I'll have a look at that, Gav. And yeah. Actually, and tennis. Cricket as well. <laughs> Uh, again, the same kind of thing. The, the rules are LTA rules, um, and uh, the ball again has some ball be uh, has some little beads inside it, which oh, makes right. it rattle basically. And again, the the orientation and the playing of the game is yeah. totally down to the player. Gav, 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 you know, you know, you know, I've got them in mind. I hope you don't mind me saying this. I, I, I'm just, I've got the golden shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what's in my head. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, you've got an earpiece in, and somebody shouting, "Up a bit, up a bit." Right a bit, right a bit, <laughs> let that, yeah, oh, you've hit it back, <laughs> that's, what that's what I can see, you don't do that, do you're, you? You're seeing, the, you're seeing the scene from Here No Evil, Scenery of Light, where the guy's, where he has that punch up in the bar, and he's got left a bit, right a bit, right yes. a bit, left a bit, 
Great movie. Yeah, no, uh, Eddie Murphy, wasn't not it? Like that. Eddie Murphy and... Was it Eddie Murphy? I don't know. Um, I'm not no, it. I can't remember who it was now, but it, it's a brilliant, brilliant oh. film. If you've never seen it, you well, will scream yeah, and cry it, with Ed, laughter. I've seen it, Gavin. Br one of my favourite movies. It wasn't Eddie Murphy, it was anyway. the other black man. This is all good fun, but we're talking about the lockdown in the UK. The well, lockdown, yeah. As a blowing person, Gavin, um, how does it affect you differently? I mean, for, for a sighted person, we, we all know how that works. But there, there's got to be, I mean, like, do you, you can't go panic buying, you know, as we said. So do you do your orders through one of the big uh, chains or anything? Or are there any special reasons that it should be different for a blowing person? Um, I've not had any trouble myself, but I mean, there's lots of people who have had, and I can understand all the people who, who in, in the UK have, ha have mentioned their problems. Um, some of the hardest things to do is, I think overall, is social distancing, because whether you're using a cane or a guide dog, I use a guide dog um, and a cane when I'm not using him uh, for tennis and stuff. The hard thing is to try and maintain that two meter distance. Um, that's the hardest thing. Um, so far, personally, myself, I've had no problems with it. Nobody's had a go at me. Nobody's said anything yeah, to me. Not but going to go, my, uh, no. Mel has. Can I, can I, my, my wife Mel, she's had problems. But and yeah. other, other people have had, you know, you shouldn't be out on your own. You shouldn't be let out. You're causing this kind of thing to happen. But I haven't had any of that, luckily. Oh, what's your dog's name? Uh, he's called Utah. Utah. I've, I've, there's a very friend, friend of mine, Barry, who, and he laughs every time I say this. Barry's an ex-policeman. He was in the dog uh, squad. And uh, well, he's retired now. What he does now, he actually trains dogs for, for, for blind people. And I used to always say, he trains blind dogs. And he used to always say, no, Steve, the dogs are not blind. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not used to people. as if they're yeah. blind as well. Yeah, I love a guy, Barry. Uh, apparently, it was yeah. Richard Pryor, Michelle says in that scene. Richard you know. Pryor, yes. Uh, Eddie, uh, Jane can't hear us very Did well. Plenty of bog rolling Tesco's, says, and apparently uh, the police are going to be um, patrolling the borders between England and Wales, preventing people from crossing the border. And he says, well, it can't be all bad then, can it, really? So, no, hang on, can I ask a quick gaff? You, you're over there, right? Uh, yeah. Well, question, quick question. Wales is shut down. I'm living in North Wales in real, and I'm flying from Manchester to come over to Tenerife because they lifted the quarantine this week. Can I leave real and drive to Manchester to fly here? I don't know. I don't. I, I think you're not meant to. But if anyone's not policing it, yes. then this is this is part of the problem. There is so much information that contradicts itself. Um, and even, I mean, even Absolutely. when you come down to this week, where friends have friends have um, been put into isolation because of one of their family uh, can't, uh, be testing positive, even when you re read the rules on the isolation, it's not clear when you have to isolate exactly, unless you have been positively tested. Otherwise, the surrounding family and friends and so on, and people in your support bubble, it's very difficult to tell when you should or shouldn't isolate. It, this is the problem, and I think why people are getting angry now, is that the government are giving out so much information that contradicts. One yeah. day it says one thing, one but says you know, the next. You know the, you know so the problem, that's you know, why people Gavin, are cross. Sorry for interrupting. You know what the, you know the problem yeah. is there? You know, you know what I see what the problem is? There's mm -hmm. no United Kingdom. They've yep. split everybody out. They've split Scotland away, the islands away, the southern islands away, England, well, they've, they've split everybody out. Like Spain, you know, it's yep. one law. We need we need one law for, for Great Britain. That's where we live, United Kingdom. There should be one law for everybody. And no, that's the only way you're gonna yep. do it. You gotta you can't have somebody in North Wales a complete lockdown. It's a dangerous place, numbers are high, people have got the viruses thriving in Wales, you know, and then they look they can come over to England, they go to Scotland. people are moving around. Yeah, and then you've got politics in the mix which is causing even more problems. But you can see, you know, it, they should really i mean it, it'd be difficult on businesses i understand that and people have to make a living and so on and so forth but i think actually wales have done the correct thing where they've said right let's not have seven tiers like the goomba dance band but let's just lock down for 17 <laughs> days and have a fire seven break tears are running through the <laughs> well done gary how yeah you remember yeah. the old songs well i'll tell you one thing but this is it one thing that has happened, 
uh, you saying that it's all uh, political and everything's in the mix. Now, you've got a lockdown happening all over the UK. Here in the Canaries, uh, we've just had our air bridges opened, which is great, right? On the yep. face of it. Uh, Jim's just said to us uh, he should have been coming over and he found a great price, right? But when he went to pay his 300 euros, it suddenly jumped to 700 euros. So this is creating, the lockdown is creating more problems. When within got, yeah, within 45 place. minutes ahead in Gavin, flights went mad. I, I, and I've got friends who are coming over. The flight from Glasgow, £7.99. It's now 180 And that was in 45 mm. minutes, the announcement of the bridge being, being formed between the Canary Islands and the UK. Right, I've got a couple of comments here. Brenda Lancaster says, no, you can't travel in an airport if you're in lockdown. Wendy Jones says, yes, you can drive to an airport. Oh, there you are. There, see, the there you go. No, to get a flight. Now, here's the confusion, right? Confusion. Brenda's saying, not if you're in your lockdown. Wendy's saying, yes, you can drive to an airport to get a flight, but you can't, apparently, drive to take someone to get a flight. So you know where people would drop you off at the airport and drive back? Can't do that again. Complications, is it? Nice to see you, Cliff. And Melanie says, Australia has divided its states and there's different rules. Wow, this is a bit different size of Australia. Yeah, but Come on, the size of Australia. No, it's the same principle, no. mate. Same principle. Yeah, I suppose so. You're yeah. saying the UK has split off. She's saying Australia has been divided into states. So Somebody's back garden in Australia is bigger than the United Kingdom, let's yeah. be honest. So, Gavin, what state are you in at the moment? Drunk? Just falling over? Confused and angry. That's what I am at the moment because it, it, you just don't know where you are from literally hours, you know, 12 hours to the next 12 hours because... You've got so much going on, not being said, then it's being said, then you've got, you know, like last week where you had Liverpool in total lockdown, Blackpool in total lockdown, in Liverpool, gyms were shut, in Blackpool, the gyms were still open. That's right, they've reopened, them. The they've reopened them now in Liverpool. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. They don't, they don't know what, half the people don't know what they're doing. Nobody knows what's happening. It's just a complete chaotic So the problem, mess. Gavin, can you see the problem we've got over here? We, we, we were on a very strict lockdown in Spain, you know, and a lot of businesses have mm -hmm. suffered here, and we're desperate for tourists, and now the UK have opened this bridge. So our numbers are way, way, way down, next to nothing. You look, We look at the UK with Wales locked down, Yorkshire, you know, London, Scotland are locked down. So these places are dangerous places that are in red and we're letting them come over here we're not letting people go to the supermarkets mm -hmm. but we're letting them come on an aeroplane and fly to Tenerife let me tell you uh, at the moment uh, during since March the 14th uh, the Canaries have had 16,531 cases with 268 deaths the UK have had 831,000 cases with 44,500 44,000. Spain has had 1,500,000 cases, but they've only had 34,725 deaths. So both Spain and the UK are coming to the Canaries with a low rate. I just have a feeling that you can't stop everybody who's got COVID virus from coming here, which means our figures are going to rocket. They've got, they've got, they've got that yeah. light. When you arrive in the Canary Islands, Gavin, you, you, you don't have a test. There's no test. What you have to do is you go wow. through the. There's a special thermal camera, camera and if you've got a mm -hmm. fever, they pull you to the side. Then they'll make a test on you. And my question is, if you come out positive, it's not happened yet. But what's going to? It's going to happen, isn't it? It's, it's bound to going to happen. You've got Brenda from Wales who's going to come over to Tenerife very soon. You know, if anyone's going to be positive, it's got to be Brenda. I'm telling you now. <laughs> and she's going to be stopped at the airport. So what are they going to do? Shove her in another caravan? I don't know what they're going to do. Brenda, what are they going to do with you? Send you home? When are you due out, Kevin? Say again? When do you think you're going to be due out? He's not in the hospital. Uh, well, we've got our, our holidays booked. We rebooked it for 1st of May next year, so we just pushed it forward a year. So Because we... we basically um, aired on this side of caution and just thought look let's try and get through this there's no way it's going to be six months nine months like the government originally said and people said because it was something that caught everybody on the hop well mostly anyway the government's obviously no government is going to find it easy to deal with 
but they were they were hoping beyond all hope that it was going to be over in six months nine months but you could tell that just you could just tell that the amount of people that were infecting so quickly that it wasn't going to be that that kind of quick thing it's just not going to be fixed i think we're going to be you know normality will not be restored yeah, agree for yeah. you know years and and the the monetary effects of this are going to be felt way into our kids future let alone our oh, own future we think so too listen very gavin, deep Mark, yeah, very deep very true very very true gavin we're running out of time it's been an absolute okay, pleasure to have you on with us this morning and uh, listen whatever you do gavin you... can i ask you a question Go ahead. I've always, I've always I want to ask a blind person this question. I'm never actually you're the first blind person I've actually really spoke to. Uh, <laughs> you know, you know, like over here, one of my pet hits over here is when you go to make a donut and they move everything around. The milk used to be there in aisle four, and they moved it to aisle two. Do you get that in England? You know, when you go shopping, you obviously as a blind person, you know, I'm going to walk into Tesco's. I've got the milk to my left and that to my right, and then you go down aisle two and I get my tins and my beans. And then overnight, some lunatics come in and they've moved everything. Does that drive you nuts? It, it would actually, yeah. I mean, it did when, before online shopping came along. Right. It was absolutely really, really annoying yeah, because I, even I, though I you, just imagine, you're going Gav, I just imagine you going home thinking you've got four tins of beans and you get four <laughs> tins of dog food. <laughs> oh, well, you can still edit them, I guess. I just, I just get that. Sorry, I just had to ask you, Gav. Right, listen, we are no. running out of time, Gav. It's been a pleasure cool. having you on with us. Uh, you take Keep care. Keep it Look going. It's a wonderful yourself. show. Love it to meet you, Gavin. Look after yourself. Love to see you all soon. Take care. Take care. It's Gavin Griffiths. Gavin Griffiths live on the Morning Go Talk Show on a Saturday morning. That was nice. It's great. He never told me he was blind. Yeah. You never asked. Say no more. Let's have a quick look at yeah, a, I could have done a that. couple of things. Could, could, could have done, done that. I could have done that. Well, put your glasses on. I could have done that. Yeah, it's really good. You look like the sea's moving in your glasses. Do it again. It does, doesn't it? Mm. How cool is that? Right, uh, Michelle says the British Embassy says you can travel abroad no matter what tea you're oh, in. Oh, the embassy. But it shows the all embassy. the confusion, no clear statements from the government. Brenda says trouble is different rules, different areas. We're not allowed. What did the embassy say two days ago, Eddie? The Canaries are now not a threat. Yeah, we are. Are <laughs> well, we ever a threat? threat? The UK is a threat, not us. Brenda says she's not she's allowed... She's still there. You know, got some washing in Ireland to do, Brenda. <laughs> she says we're not allowed out of Caffili unless it's for work. You're never allowed out of Caffili. Uh, Spring Hotels have a notice up for all its guests saying they can have a free COVID test while they're staying at that hotel. Well, there's another double-edged sword, isn't it? Because if you're staying in a hotel and you're aware that the AXA company have a, a policy, yeah. uh, isn't that just saying, listen, I'll tell you what, you didn't have COVID before you came, let's give you a test, and if you've got, got it, it, we'll put you on to And then you're going to be stuck in your hotel room for two weeks quarantine, I don't think you're going to have a test. That's the way it works. Then, let's, do you speak Welsh? Uh, I can say Nostar. Nostar. Shalom Kamrai. Oh, that is, go. do you speak Welsh? Shemai. That's for all our, in that's for our Welsh uh, listeners out there. Our noid, the poor noid. Right. Very good. See, I don't know, I don't know what it means. Uh, James uh, Blagovic says his fear the pe is that people are going to rush out, especially during half term. I know this is now. Yeah, I today. know people are flying out from lockdown areas in Wales. It's Ooh. all very frightening. Ooh. It is. It is. Rob Tavernis says, "Well done, Gavin. He was a great guest, wasn't he?" Love Gavin. Yeah, that was very Please nice. Be. We need to find someone else next week, and then it'll be. Gav is right, we have Mr. Tumble in England, the Cockerel in Scotland, and Mr. Duckford in Wales. Uh, Mr. Tumble refusing free school meals, well there's another thing. I actually do uh, applaud Martin Rashford, do you know what's going on? No, nah, see I don't follow football, I, don't, I, know, I, 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 know, I know something, something about food, uh, food the, wasn't it? The, it's the, key, the, the guy, the footballer, Martin Rashford, um, is his name Martin Rashford? No Rashford, idea, Rashford. no idea. He, uh, he wants the government to keep Who's he play for? School, I have no idea. There you are. But he's doing a good thing, he's getting, trying to get the government to provide free school meals through the uh, the lockdown and uh, after why do people whatever. need them uh, hey people need them well i don't know this is what i'm saying but at least yeah, he's you know, trying to make himself heard but you know have have these times well, have these times Eddie. you're looking at these houses they the, the, they want free meals they've got sky tv they've got the big 52 inch television read that one oh, i need my glasses yeah put your glasses on hang on oh mr care 
Good morning. Marcus, Marcus. He said don't have to shout. Thanks, Marcus, I'm from Glasgow. We all shout in Glasgow. Right. Now listen, guys. Another thing. Oh, hang on a second. Gather round. Gather round. Come on, everybody on the playground. Am I shouting? Yes. Well, apparently you are. Bob says so. Bob says this. Bob had an operation this week. Well done, me. Bob. He's still alive. Has he had that? Has he? Has he had that operation to remove that guitar from him? Because mm. every time I see him, it's like it's uh, holding his guitar. No, that's either probably his old ticket. Oh, Seventy-four, right. Bob. Is that what it still is? Still with us, though. Fabulous. He's all right. Good I'll see, and I'll see you soon. You enjoy your two weeks holiday, Bob. We love Bob. And I'm going to stop shouting. I get excited. He does. He's a very excitable person. Right now, you gather ground. Don't forget, he's a very interesting saying for you. Spring forward, fall back. Yeah, that's you know how that people, yeah, that's how people remember it, don't That's they? it. That's the clocks people... go back. What's all that about? Do you... Well, why don't they just normalise it and say that's it? Some that's countries, some countries do. Well, China, China has got seven time zones, but it's all got the same time. Same time. Same time. In America, if I get this right, there's three states in America who don't change the clock. Don't ask me which ones. I know there's three, they don't change. India don't change, some other countries don't change. So why do we? They keep threatening, don't they? Yeah, well, they're threatening, but uh, I have a question. What difference would it make? It goes back to, we, it was, was it Britain? I can't remember, it's something about to do with the war. I don't know upset my German listeners. But it's something to do with the war, wasn't it? Eddie, you, you, you remember this. It was more yeah. daylight for the farmers. Yeah, Chris says, like, we need another hour in 2020. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the way Yeah, it but it's something there with the farmers, isn't it? I didn't, I didn't know. And now we get most of the stuff from Europe anyway, so we don't have any farmers left in England. I can think of one fantastic benefit to not changing the times, and that is the clock in my car. Have you ever tried to change the clock? In no, your car? you're one of them, are you? No, it's impossible. Oh. You got, do you know, for six months of the year, my clock is an hour and a half. Are you one of in them? The hate one that. Of what? Hate that. Hate what? You don't change it in the car. No, I can't be doing with it. I mean, it's like, I tried, I tried. But the only time you think about changing it is when you're driving. You go, hate that. No, what do you hate about it? No, you can't be asked to just put your finger on the button and move it. It's not that easy. Well, no, changing the, 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 the what's this, is back. So, yeah, you've got to keep your finger on a bit longer. Oh, yeah, and then you go you go over by a minute and you think, oh, I'm not having no, that. No, changing the minutes, you're changing you're, the hour. No, but you go all the way around the no, you don't have to, you don't have to, it's, it's, one, it's either 1 to 12 or 1 to 24. It's when you drive. It's not rocket science, is it? It is. Have you had a half-decent car like mine, it changes by itself. Oh, he's got a new car. He's got a new car. Oh, who well, else buys the car during lockdown? I, I was bored. Just, I was bored. Was. And, you know, the worst thing about it, Eddie, Opal sent me an email. How's the car going? This is during lockdown. <laughs> and it's not left the bloody garage. <laughs> I call it the Naranja Wagon. Yeah, I love which it. Means That's the, a nice car. It's it's orange. It's been tango. My friend Wendy in Edinburgh's got a lovely new car, and that's yellow. I went, I, I've got a friend in Vietnam. Is he yellow? <laughs> yeah. You can't say that. I just, I'm sorry. Just yeah, I said that. Some, someone said to me like a few yeah. weeks ago, they said, oh, I've got black friends. I said, well, I don't. I've just got friends. So have I. So have I. It's because you, what you just said. I wouldn't well, you, say, oh, you, my you, yellow you, friend. My, did I say that last week? Somewhat like that. My yellow friend from Vietnam. You were talking about people, thank God they were dead last week. Well, they're, well, they're not. They're all alive. Not all of them. Which one? The ones that aren't. Well, the ones I mentioned are still here. Well, I've apologised already. But you know what I mean? You wouldn't say my yellow friend from Vietnam. No. I'm a black friend from Nottingham. This was the point I was coming to. We're hearing a lot uh, about BLM and everything at the moment. And uh, How do you get back on to immigration? Well, it's... it's I'm all, talking about the clock. Yeah, well, it's moved on. It's moved on. No, it goes back. It, well, it's gone back. It's gone back. But you see, Not B with it today. Yeah, BLM. BLM. We can't work all this out. We've been talking about this. And it's like Steve just says. We, we don't have... Uh, different coloured friends, we just have friends. And I think if everyone in the world had that just realised that that's what it is, they're just friends, then the world would be great, wouldn't the it? The other thing it got me, and it has for years, and I've never said it to anybody, I'm going to say it because I'm live, and if I say it, it's out, it's out there. Maybe you can explain to me, because we're going to run out of time. We are. Why do people in America say, I'm African American? The really? African Americans. You're either African or you're American. And that's what causes trouble. And you also get Irish Americans. 
It's in America, yeah. Yeah. We don't get that in, in England, though, no. do you? You live in you live in America. You've chose to live in America. You could be a British immigrant to America, or you could be from whatever country and go and. Live I'm not in happy America. with that. Well, no, I just think it's all totally confusing. In fact, to be honest, I think the entire world is bloody confusing at the moment. Yeah, I think we should set the reset button. Yeah. Well, Let's go back to Stone Age. Stone Age. And then Bob can start singing again. I can start dragging Holly round by her hair. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. Well, no, I mean, you, you never know. She might quite I never got to tell the story about my granddad. Go on, you got five minutes to tell uh, about your granddad. Because I promised someone I'd tell this story. About my granddad works for Shanks Toilets. Do you know Shanks? Yeah, I remember now, that. They, yeah, when you wait for a pee, you see Shanks on it. Yeah. And obviously, he's, he's dead now. And uh, and he said to me, he loved fishing, but when he lived in Scotland, there was no rivers or sea there. And he says, when I retire, I'm going to go up to live in the north of Scotland, right up to the north of Scotland. I'm going to retire there with your grandmother, get a little cottage, and I'm going to go fishing every single day. You know what he did? What? He retired from Shanks, stopped making toilets, and they left. They went way up to the north of Scotland, and he got and he went fishing every single day. My grandmother would make him a little picnic, his fishing rod, and his fishing tackle, his little flask, his little tartan flask. He would go fishing every day. You know what happened? What? One day he got to the ice and they caught a big hole in the ice, and he was sitting there fishing for ten minutes. And he hadn't caught anything, and he heard the voice: "There are no fish under the ice." And he thought, well, "I'm going to stop drinking at night. I'm hearing voices." He carried on fishing another couple of minutes. And the voice came back in. He, there are no fish under the ice. And he wasn't religious, my grandfather. He says, is that you, God? He says, is that you? And the voice came back. And the voice came back saying, it's the manager of the ice rink. <laughs> <laughs> we brought him back. Oh, <laughs> we brought him back. At oh, least, dear. listen, Paul Greenwood, if you're listening, you can start working next door in four minutes. You know what I mean? Thank God they never started. There they are. Oh, I told you, no, wait, wait four minutes, wait four minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. I might be worth it this week, I do apologise. There are lots of things happening, you know, with my holiday being cancelled, the temperatures in the mountain are dropping. It, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I just, people, you get weeks like that, don't you? And I've had a week like that. You're talking one day to the next, everything Yeah, changed. you don't know. It's like the chicken shy. One one night we're packed, next night we're quiet. It's up and down. Exactly stability, the same. Stability is out the window. No, same day in the 60s, not a problem. Listen. We'll uh, get through it, Eddie. Yeah, we will. We went through worse. You we went through marriage. I went through. I'll be I won't get a scone today, will I? No, I don't. I have no so. chance. Holiday will love his scone. I think your scone days are oh, gone, my gone, friend. Gone, gone. Right, listen. I hope I can get home dressed as Johnny Walker without the police stopping me. Can you get Brummy Canarians? Of course you can. That's who we are. Well, that's who I am. You're not Canarian. No, but I'm living here. But you're not Canarian. Well, we're talking about Irish Americans. People say to me. I've just been asked if you can get Brummy Canarians. No, you don't. People say to me, eh. Uh, where are you from? I never say Tenerife. I'm from Glasgow. Hey. I'm from Glasgow. People say to people, oh, where are you from? You say, oh, oh Tenerife. No, but you're not. No, you're you, not. No, no, you, you don't. You live in Tenerife, but you're not from Tenerife. Hang on a second. You should be proud where you come from. Yeah, but you don't say I'm from Glasgow. Look there, they say I'm from Glasgow. No, they don't. Do they not? No, no, that's, no. that's a myth. Oh, well, no, just That's an absolute myth. Like, Scottish people are tight. We're not tight. No. You know. And we don't glad that that's our that's Nesbit bloke, isn't it? Well, that's him. That's the guy who's dubbed you in. What well, anyway, I was lovely to be Norman Bennett, and if he you're watching, was. I do apologise. I'm not giving you credit where credit's due, yeah. and I hope your budgies are all right. Oh okay, yeah, lovely budgies. Guys, can we just say a big thank you to, to everybody's Gavin. tuned in? Everybody's tuned in. Thanks to Gavin for being our guest today. It's been absolutely Can I get a guest brilliant. on next week? Yeah, you find them. I'll get a guest. We'll find them, we'll get them. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been Eddie from 60s. I'm been Steve Gerald and from, I don't know, from the circus by the looks of it. Yeah, guys, whatever you're doing, have yourself an absolute. <laughs> Saturday morning and you're in the right place at the right time for the multicolored talk show with Stevie Gerald and Eddie Hastings.